On the 27th day, 1957, directed by William Asher, starring Jean Berry, Valerie French, and George Voskovec. A small group of people from around the world are given weapons of mass destruction by the member of a dying alien race who will inherit the planet if humanity wipes itself out within 27 days. Can humanity learn to coexist, or will the planet be theirs? This film was recommended by a fan. Thanks for the suggestion. This film felt like a feature-length episode of The Twilight Zone. That being said, writer John Mantley is no Rod Serling. The way the weapons work and the stipulations the alien establishes to the group are needlessly convoluted, something The Twilight Zone's airtight scripts rarely had issue with during its five-season run. This isn't a sci-fi film you're going to watch if you're looking for lavish sets and complex alien designs. About 98% of the film is simply an ethical drama. The UFO looks incredible in the handful of shots it's in, which was actually stock footage from Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. The cast are all given fairly developed characters with differing views thanks to the film originating as a novel. Although a brunt of the film focuses on three of the capsule recipients, with a fourth in a supporting role. The best moments of the film come from the supporting characters in this film. Especially the scenes with the Chinese bystander trapped in the crossfire of war, and a Russian soldier who desperately tries preventing the weapons from falling into the hands of the Soviet Union. It's also amazing how quickly Valerie French's character seems to forget about the man she's with in the beginning of this film, only to get involved with one of the fellow abductees. I guess humanity-ending dilemmas can change a girl's heart. I always enjoy highlighting silly moments in the films that I review. This one came with two of them. For your viewing pleasure, I give you one of the silliest car accidents I've ever seen in a 50s movie, and one of the fakest slaps I've ever seen. The problem with this film is you can't have an effective moral debate if you're going to rely on an unbearably schmaltzy resolution at the climax, which is unfortunately a frequent occurrence in films from the 50s and 60s. Verdict? Meh. I didn't hate it, and there are some memorable performances here, but I'm afraid this invasion story wasn't stellar enough to recommend. That concludes this week's review. If there's any obscure sci-fi or horror film you'd like to suggest, feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure to tune in next time for another thrilling global adventure.